After you turn 40 to 50 years old, for the average person, the aging process means your golf game is slightly worse than the year before. In other words, the normal for the normal person, aging moves you from the blue tees, then to the white tees, then the yellows, maybe even to the reds. As a fellow who suffered a debilitating stroke, I've moved from the hospital bed to the reds, then to the yellows, and now I'm about to move to the whites. This is the kind of thinking, all kidding aside, that you have to have if you are to recover from a stroke. My name is Rick Palomino, and 18 years ago, I suffered a devastating stroke. I couldn't walk, couldn't talk, and the medical prognosis was dire. When I surveyed what a disaster my life had become, I realized I didn't have time enough to recover everything in every sense. This is especially true in the area of sports. I had participated in various levels of uh, running for my entire life, running marathons or whatever, and uh, I played tennis at a low level, but I ice skated at a high level. And uh, I played pawn hockey as a kid, baseball, American football, you get the idea. And you realize there's a point where even if you're normal, when you're approaching the 50s, no one plays, for instance, football and baseball anymore. For the average person, the only sport that they could continue to participate in a high level or a reasonably acceptable level, especially if they are in a debilitated state, is golf, which I sort of played before my stroke. When you have a stroke, you then you realize you, you won't live forever. You know, stroke is a great reality check. And time is of the essence. So what better sport to invest my energy in the golf? I realized that I could play it at whatever level, level I'm playing at because I'm only competing with myself until I die. For the stroke victim, particularly, is the only sport where at any one round, you could hit one shot just like a pro. And short, mostly short, but even long ones. Not well, maybe short. Uh, but that, that those shots give you such a sense of accomplishment, you get in nothing else at that time in your life. <laughs> is not, and also, is it not nicer than a gym? To be surrounded in surroundings like the, this? Plus, to play it properly, there's another great benefit. You have to really stretch, which is important for the stroke victim in general, whether they're playing golf or not. Also, for me, in my case, I had the luck of having a right side stroke, which means the right side for me is the trailing side because I'm a right-handed golfer. Or the less important side for golf. What you lose in distance, you have to focus on in accuracy. I see people that out hit me by a long shot, but often they spend time, time I don't, in the woods. Plus, 
Golf shows positive improvement for the stroke victim. In other words, your efforts are rewarded. I play golf better now than I did before my stroke, which is super positive for the uh, stroke victim. I cannot say how that about many activities. It's in, it is important also, just add an, at, from an attitudinal confidence building side, uh, uh, frame of mind. Okay, I play, this is my golfing shirt, Tiger Woods Red. And I don't do that like I'm gonna intimidate other players. I do it to make myself feel good about myself. Anyway, let me tell you my story. Get into the details of how I did it. Roughly in three months, I get into picking up a golf ball. I'm not saying hitting a golf ball, hitting. I'm saying picking it up. And I only I was able to pick up one at a time. And at first, it took me a lot of struggles to get the control to hold the golf ball. Next, I worked towards holding in my hand two golf balls at one time. And then I tried to move it in my finger, between my fingers like rotating the balls. Then I moved to three. Right now I can pick up four. But I worked on my hand first because at that point I couldn't walk. I couldn't even lean on things. I could basically walk with, a, with, with the extreme difficulty with a cane. Okay, then I picked up a club in th in, within six months. When I accomplished that, I moved on, just picking it up, <laughs> I moved on to putting. I practiced putting on a rug in the house with only my putter and a ball. When I felt very comfortable hitting a, hitting a putt, not sinking, sinking the putt, just hitting it, I moved on to my next athletic, uh, low athletic move, chipping. Chipping, uh, and that's at roughly, now we're in this nine months. You have to keep your uh, bo lower body relatively still in chipping. And basically you lean more on your left side, which is for me, the strong side. So chipping was a good thing for me. Um, I started in my backyard and with this instruction, instruction book that I had from my old days, you know, simple, every pro shop or golf store sells something like this, the golf instructor. And because I forgot how to chip, I forgot where you put the, your feet, I forgot where you uh, put your arms, what, what it, the stroke affects your mental, your, the mental connections between your brain and your muscles. So it was a, I had to reread every day what I was trying to do for that day. And you should do that <laughs> for regular plays, but especially if your stroke affected at all. When I felt comfortable with chipping, which doesn't require total balance and movement of the lower body. Basically, your lead on your left side, if you're a right-hand golfer, and that's convenient for me, having had a right side stroke. Hey, I, I thought, I can do this. I was very optimistic now about my future. Um, Then I th it said, maybe I have to 
get a better sense of balance to make a full swing. So I invested a little money in a, one of these balance boards. There are many brands. And this is the high setting. And this is the low. I stayed always on the low because I wanted to control. I didn't have, and I still don't have such control uh, to use that at the high setting. But I mean, basically it was rotational movements or side back and forth, side to side. I worked on that for a long time. And I, in the meantime, also added uh, the weight shift in general. So then I did the final chapter of this part of the story. I tried weights, uh, weight shift in the backyard. And I didn't want to be in the... Uh, house because there's too much chance of hitting the furniture if I fell and I did um, but you know what by constant practice and practice my weight shift was not necessarily as bad as it used to be so I worked on that for months before appearing at a driving range I was pushing myself I went cl club by club through the bag at the driving range. Because once I could swing ad adequately all the cl clubs, I went to the range and then when I felt confident about that, I went to play on a course. I was determined not to keep score. I purposely lost school cards did everything to sabotage anyone keeping my score. This is now, uh, it would probably have a year passed since this stroke, maybe a year and a half. This was therapy, not a competition against even myself, just yet. I played golf with an encouraging friend who egged me on. This was so important and I thank him for that. Chris, which is his name, didn't comment on my uh, duffing a ball. He didn't comment when I missed it, missed it twice. He said, ah, oh, better next time, you know. Uh, it used to be super common to miss it twice. I was super tired also at first, and Chris egged me on. This is a warning to everyone. Know your limits, because I was tired. I should have stopped, and maybe I pushed myself too much, but I was so excited to be out on the course. I had a rule. I didn't hold up play at all. If it took me two, two shots to hit the three, um, two shots and I missed it, I picked up my ball and I walked, caught up with Chris. You can't be too proud. I can't emphasize that enough. You can't be too proud. Remember, you are lucky to be on the right side of the grass, let alone worry that you just missed a swing and you'd be agitated about something as insignificant as that. And I worked on my golf skills ever since. As I joined the club, I went on a trip to golf school, all of which me made me feel a bit better about myself. You know, playing in, in the public courses of Florida, you're often playing with strangers from all over. And they often 
when I mention I had a stroke, whatever reason, I usually say nothing to anyone. Um, they say to me, hey, you can't tell, which is I'm very happy about, but who knows whether they're being polite. So how good am I now? Well, now I'm not laughable. And I basically play bogey or double bogey, depending on how I feel that day, golf. I've progressed from too numerous to count the strokes at first. And that's why I didn't keep score. To passable. When people ask, what is your handicap? I answer, my swim. Two examples from Risa Rams at a place called Tatum Ridge. One from two years ago. It is hole four. It's a par five. It illustrates the erratic nature of my swing at that time. But at least I made hit the ball and make now progress to the hole. <laughs> Looked like a, um, you know, is he going to make it? <laughs> the second example is a par four. Uh, I think it's hole six. But anyway, also from Tatum Ridge. And it's after I took a set of six lessons from Wendy Patterson at Legacy Golf Course, a club. And it shows improvement. I'm, I'm hitting the ball much better. Always I hit it in towards the middle, but now it's longer. As I have explained over and over, I'm not a great golfer. I've never studied the game until I get a little better after my stroke, but I never studied it before. I'm still not a good golfer, but I take enormous pleasure in going out of the, on the course and forgetting that I had had a stroke, and enjoying the weather, the beauty of nature, the exercise, and just being one of the guys, having a beer after the round, and talking about how I almost birdied a hole that I in fact bogeyed or double bogeyed. In other words, I feel normal again.